All right, welcome to our first real world example. We're gonna take what we've learned so far and build something that's real, something that you could see on a real website, something practical and something that you could take and use on your website today. And for that, we are going to look at form validation. This is one of the best things that you can do with a website. Now, normally a user goes to a form, they fill out 20 or so fields, they hit submit, it goes to the server, and the server says, hey, you messed up A, B, C, D, E, etc. Well, if we can do this client side, we could provide immediate feedback to the user that something is wrong. This saves them time, this makes them happier, and we all want happy users. So let's talk a bit about what form validation actually means. So first thing we have to do is listen for a form submission. Now, technically, you can validate a form while the user is entering it, but I like to wait until the form is actually done before I start telling the user all the things they messed up. We then need to check the fields in the form, both for what's required as well as the format of the value. Now, this can get a little bit complex. So for example, you may have a field that's not required unless some other field is also required. Now, for our example, we'll keep things pretty simple and have basically a, just a combination of required and not required fields. We'll also keep our format checking pretty simple as well. So for example, for an email address, we'll do a very, very basic look at the data to see if it looks kind of like an email address. Now, if the form is bad, we have to tell the user why it's bad. And we also have to ensure that we prevent the form from actually submitting. Finally, if the form is good, we want it to go forward and actually submit to our server. Let's do it. Okay, so I began by building my form. I wanted it to look a little bit prettier than normal, so I added some bootstrap, and basically I just wrote out my form in terms of what I needed. This is a contact form, so it asks for a name, it asks for an email address, and finally some comments, and then a submit button. I don't have any jQuery, any validation at all. I just started with the basic form. Let's look at this in the browser. All right, there's my form. It's very pretty, thank you Bootstrap, and it's ready to go. Let's start making this better. All right, so I've begun by adding jQuery, adding my document.ready, and then I've added a submit handler for the form. That's all I wanna do now is prevent the form from doing anything when I hit submit. Now, I tend to screw up a lot, so let's take a look at this just to make sure it's working. Okay, here's the form again. I hit submit, and bam, I got my console message and the form didn't go anywhere at all. Awesome. All right, now I'm ready to actually do some stuff. So let's go through this line by line. And again, I'm in my submit handler. So I begin by getting the values. My form has three fields I care about, name, email, and comments. Now I need some way to know if I have screwed up and if the form should be prevented from submitting. So I created a variable called has errors. I set it to false. And as soon as something goes wrong, I will set that to true. I also need a way to tell the user you know, what went wrong. So I created a simple array, error messages, and I'm gonna push into that all the different things the user messed up. So the first thing I check is the name field. And if it's a blank, hey, guess what? I have an error. I set that flag to true, and then I add a nice error message into my array so that the user can you know, figure out what they did wrong. Email is a bit different. It's not required. So basically what I say is if they did type something and it's not a valid email address, I have an error. Now I kind of cheated on the email validation. I basically said if there's an at symbol in there and it's not the first character, I'm good. Just to be clear, that is not going to be perfect. But for right now, it's good enough. As before, I set my flag and I push in a specific error message. Next, I check comments. If comments is also blank, 
Once again, I have an error. Finally, I check that flag. If an error occurred, I'm just going to put it in the console for now and return false. If there were no errors, I'm going to return true, and that will let the form submit as normal. Let's look at this in the browser. Okay, here's my form. Let's go ahead and submit. It should definitely be bad. And I could see that, yep, it's bad. I have two errors. Name is required and comments are required. Let's type in a name, just Raymond, hit submit. And now my error is a bit smaller. It's just comments. If, re if you remember, I said, if I specify an email address, it has to have an at sign. Let's type one in and hit submit. And, oh, oh wow, what happened here? Well, this is something interesting. So form validation is something that's been kind of important for well, pretty much the entire history of the web. And finally, browsers are beginning to bake some of this into the actual form fields themselves. I specified that this was an email field. I said type equals email. And now Chrome and other modern browsers will actually do some form detection for me. That's awesome. But for right now, I don't want that to get in the way. I'll show you a workaround for that back in the code. I'm going to go into my form field and specify no validate. And basically what I'm saying is that for browsers that do do form validation, I, I want you to just skip that for now and just don't do it. I've got it handled. So we'll save it. Go back to our form, reload. And now when I do a bad email address and hit submit, I get my error handling instead. Let's keep on going. Type in a name. We'll type in a proper email address. And finally, some comments and hit submit. And I could see in the browser, it actually did submit. Now I'm going right back to the form, not a particular form processor. That's why all the values just showed up there. Awesome. So now we have a problem. We need to actually show those errors to the user. Only programmers like us make use of the console. So what I have did is I've added a div, a blank div, that's going to store the error messages when they show. Now let's go back to our code. So what I've done now is basically I've said, when an error occurs, I'm going to create a string that's going to contain that error message. Now I'm using Bootstrap, so I'm using a particular class here to make it look like a good error. And I'm essentially generating that string from the array of messages. You can see where I loop over them and basically just add every message to that error. I finally put that into the div I created so the user sees something. Now, what happens if the form is good? We go back to the top and you'll see the very first thing I do is clear any previous error that may have been there. That way, when they do fix the issue and they hit submit, that will go away. Now, in case you're wondering, you know, what happens if on the very first time they fill that form, they do it perfectly? This won't do anything bad. It'll just say, take the already empty div and make it empty again. Let's run this and see how it works. Okay, let's see what happens. And awesome. Again, thank you, Bootstrap, for making this pretty. And let's start making this form better by typing in a name. And now when I hit submit, the error is a bit nicer. And finally, if I do something good, it submits. Awesome. Form validation, a real practical example. But you know what? I'm still not satisfied. We really haven't talked a lot about best practices so far, but let's make this you know, form just a little bit nicer. All right, so here is the final version of my form validation. The first thing I've done is taken all the code out and put it into a separate file. I've called that file form.js. Now what's nice about this is that this particular HTML file can have just HTML. If I'm working with someone who knows HTML and doesn't know jQuery, the jQuery won't get in the way, it won't confuse them. Now let's look at my JavaScript file, because I've made a few changes there as well. One of the first things I did was in my document.ready, I've created variables to stand in for the result of those selectors. 
And you can see four of them here. Result error, name, email, and comments. So why have I done that? Well, every time I submitted that form, I used a selector to grab those fields. So you would hit submit and jQuery would say, let me find the name field, for example. It would then run the value command on that to look at the value. Now, why does jQuery need to find that field every single time I submit? Can't I do that one time and just use that result again and again? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now, this won't have a big performance savings, but in general, it's kind of a good practice to do. Once I've found something, if I plan on reusing it, there's no need for me to re-get it. Now, why did I put a dollar sign in front? No reason at all. It's a convention that some people follow to say, this particular variable, it's a jQuery selector result variable. So the dollar sign's not special, doesn't mean anything. Basically, it's a flag to me to kind of remember that, yeah, this is a jQuery object versus name, which is a simple string. So exact same functionality, but a little bit better practices. Hope you enjoyed this and hope you could use this real world example right now.